Hey everyone, welcome to the last video of the MAT series. Today we'll be looking at question 5 from the 2017 MAT exam. Let's get straight into the question. 10 children, C0, C1, up to C9 are seated clockwise in a circle. The teacher walks clockwise behind the children with a large bag of sweets. She gives a sweet to the child C1. She then skips a child and gives a sweet to the next child C3. She then skips two children and gives a sweet to the next child C6. She continues in this way at each stage skipping one more child than at the preceding stage before giving a sweet to the next child. For part i, the k sweet is given to the child c i. Explain why i is the last digit of the number k times k plus 1 over 2. This diagram represents our table. The children are arranged clockwise in increasing order from c0 up to c9. I'm just going to sketch the pattern the teacher takes. So she starts off at c1, then she skips a student and goes to c3, gives a, c a sweet to c3, then skips two and goes to C6, then skips three and goes back to C0, and this is gonna carry on, so I'll just write etc. here. So I'm just gonna write out the children she visits and we can try and see a pattern. So she starts at C1, then goes to C3, then goes to C6, then goes to C0, and etc. So now let's look at the difference between the number of the, each child. So from C1 to C3, we have plus two, from C3 to C6, we have plus 3. And from C6 to C0, we have plus 4 steps taken. We can imagine having a C0 um, where she has an extra step, but this didn't really happen. Um, but this helps because we can see that we've got an arithmetic progression, so we're adding an extra step each time. So this, we can essentially write it as the sum of the first i equals 1 of the first r natural numbers from i equals 1 up to k. And there's a very neat formula for this which happens to be k times k plus 1 over 2. So this formula will give us the number of steps the teacher takes around the circle. And because there are only 10 students, we can just ignore everything except the last digit because this will give us the number of steps taken around the circle and it will tell us the position she is um, with, with respect to the children. So this is how we get to the formula. For part ii, we're told that k is between 1 and 18 inclusive. We need to explain why the k and 20 minus k minus 1 for sweet are given to the same child. So we need to show that the 20 minus k minus 1 for sweet is given to the same child as the k for sweet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this number into the formula we had earlier, and hopefully we can find out which child this sweet was given to. So if I let k essentially be this number, then k plus 1 is going to be 20 minus k and we're going to divide by 2. So I'm going to expand these brackets out. We'll get 400 minus 20k minus, oh, that should be okay there, minus 20k and plus k squared minus 20 plus k. And this is all over 2. So if I take out the k squared and the k, and I'm just going to bring it this to the front, k squared plus k over 2, and we're left with so we'll have uh, 400 minus 20, which is 380. And then you have minus 40k, and that's it. So this is over 2. So we can factorize this as k times k plus 1 over 2, which is exactly this formula we had earlier. So if we can prove this is a multiple of 10, then we've shown that it's going to be given to the same child. So this simplifies as 190 minus 20k, and we can indeed factor out a 10 from it. So k times k plus 1 over 2 plus 10 times 19 minus 2k. So we've shown that this time right here is a multiple of 10. So any multiple of 10 isn't going to affect which child is given around the circle. So this formula represents which child gets a 20 minus k minus 1 for sweet. And this formula represents which child gets a k for sweet. And we've shown that this side is going to be the same child as this side because this we're only adding on a multiple of 10 and this doesn't affect it. So this is our explanation for why these uh, sweets get given to the same child. For part iii, we need to explain why the k sweet is given to the same child as the k plus 20 of sweet. I'm going to use the same approach as we just did for the question ii. There's other ways to go about this, but I think this is the most straightforward way. So we need to show that the k plus 20 of sweet is given to the same child as the k of sweet. Now we're just going to use the same method as before, so we're going to plug k plus 20 into this equation here. So k plus 20 times k plus 21 over 2. Now we can expand this out as k squared plus 
41k plus 420 all over 2. So I'm going to take out the k squared and a k and I'll get k squared plus k over 2. We'll leave this separate and we're left with 40k plus 420 over 2. And again we can factorize this out to get k times k plus 1 over 2. And then plus we can divide this by 2, we get 20k plus 210. Last step is to factorize the 10 out. So we have 10 times 2k plus 21. And this is a multiple of 10. So by the same argument as in the last part, the k plus 20th suite gets given to the same child as the k suite. For part IV, we are asked which children can never receive any sweets. So for this question, we're just going to use our formula and plug in values of k to see what pattern we get. So for k equals 1, we just get 1, and then pattern carries on 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28, 36, 45. Now I'm going to stop there. So this formula tells if we take the last digit, we can mark out which child got which suite. So if we convert this into the children, we get C1, by just taking the last digit, we're going to write C3, C6, C0, C5, C1, C8, C6, C5. So the first suite got given to child 1, second to child 3, third to child 6, etc. like this. And I've written out the first nine children here. Because we can use this formula up here from early in the question. We worked out that the k suite is given to the same child as a 20 minus k minus 1 suite, which means we've got a symmetry. So after the first nine children, if we plug in k equals 9, we can work out that the k suite, the ninth suite, is given to the same child as the tenth suite. So I can write out these numbers backwards up to 18. So we get c5, c6, c8, c1, c5, c0, c6, c3, c1. So we've worked out which children get the first 18 suites. But this formula right here, saying that the k, k suite and k, k plus 20th suite get given to the same child, tells us that there's a cycle of 20 suites. So let's work out the next two children. So if the first child got the 18th suite, then if the teacher moves 19 steps around the circle, um, she's going to get back to C0. And then similarly, if she walks 20 steps around the circle, she's going to get back to C0 as well. So now we've got a 20 pattern cycle. So after the teacher has given out 20 seats, she's going to repeat the same pattern and the same children will get the same suites. So all we need to do is look at the list and see which children are missing. So the missing children, missing are C2, C4, C7, and C9. And that's the answer. So now we're told that when the teacher has given out all the suites, she has walked exactly 183 times around the circle and given the last suite to C0. For part V, we need to work out how many suites there were initially. If the teacher has gone around the circle 183 times, as there's 10 children in the circle, this means that she's taken 1830 steps. So now I'm going to use the formula k times k plus 1 over 2, which gives which child gets the k suite. So if I set this equal to 1830, we can work out how many suites there are initially. So I'm going to solve for k. Yes, k times k plus 1 equals 3660. Now this is a quadratic equation. You can go through the whole process using the formula or completing the square to solve this. Or you can just spot that the solution here is k equals 60. As 60 times 61 gives us this number. So this is how many suites there are initially. For the last part of this question, VI, we are asked which children received the most sweets and how many did they receive? To work out which children received the most sweets, we just need to look at our previous list of which children get the sweets in the 20 period cycle. And we see that C0, C1, C5, and C6 all receive four sweets, which is the most of any child. And this is out of 20, so each one gets four out of 20. So this is the ratio of the share of the total amount of sweets they get. And we worked out earlier that there was 60 sweets. So each child gets 4 times 3, which equals 12 sweets. So each child gets 12 sweets. And that's the answer. 
So that's it. That's how you answer the whole of question five from the 2017 MAT exam. And this concludes my MAT series. If you have any more questions about the process, the application process or interviews or the exam, just leave it down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And for anyone taking the exam, good luck.